How are you doing everybody? Hope you're having a great day. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the new Dungeons & Dragons book that came out, which is Modern Kynan's uh, Monsters of the Multiverse. I think that's the name of the book. Let's uh, just check. Ah, it looks like it's just called Monsters of the Multiverse. So, in this new book, a lot of new, well, some of the races have been updated. And what, I, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at the races and seeing what changes have happened. And I'll also give you some tips, basically, on what some of my players have used some of the races. And if you have something similar to add on, please leave them in the comments. And before we begin, I'd like to give an explanation as to what's going on with the channel. Um, so as you might have noticed that there has not been any videos released uh, in the last two weeks, I believe. Um, it's because um, some events happened in my life. One was uh, my graduation ceremony happened. So I wasn't able to edit uh, as I didn't have enough time to edit as normally as I would. The other one was a, a family member had some... Uh, a very close family member had some medical issues, so I was with them most of the time and uh, basically didn't have time to edit. And plus, I also got another job, which is in my field of IT, um, the thing I did a degree for. And uh, yeah, so that's keeping me busy. And uh, in the future, just uh, I'll, I'll try to get as many videos out as possible. I'm uh, doing this video on a character from Skeleton Knight in Another World. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of information, uh, as I thought before. Okay, with that out of the way, let's uh, dive on. So let's look at the Aarakocra. And this is the legacy version, I believe. Let me see, yep. So this is the old version. If you've had it, uh, you probably can still use this if you want to. Um, I've non not have, a, sorry, I've never had a player used Aarakocra before. Um, there were some that were planning on it, but then gave up on it. Um, you can still use some of these, like the great purpose, the names and everything, it's still there. Um, let's take a look at their traits. Um, ability score is, uh, let's see, dexterity and wisdom increases. Dexter dexterity by two, uh, wisdom by one. Age, they reach maturity at age three, okay. And usually live longer than 30 years. Uh, sorry, don't usually live longer than 30 years. Short lifespan, okay, not bad. Um, 30 years is, I guess if you mature by age 3, it's you have what, like 27 years of uh, adulthood? Let's see, alignment, uh, huh, really two sides, they're mostly neutral, I believe. Chaotic neutral, hmm, not bad. Um, yeah, most of my characters usually, they start off with lawful good, neutral good. Even some could chaotic good, but as they play more and more campaigns, they usually go towards neutral good, neutral evil, some even go to lawful evil. Um, that's the trend I've seen. If you've seen the same thing, leave it in the comments. For size, they are about 5 feet tall. Uh, they are thin, weightless bodies, okay, about 80 to 100 pounds. Size medium, which is going to be the case for all the creatures in this uh, video. Speed is 25 feet. Flight is, uh, they have a flying speed of 50 feet. And I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of players didn't want to use it. It was because it seemed broken to them a little bit. Even to me, because I think this is one of the few races that can actually fly by themselves. Yeah, I mean, compare this. They, the speed gets doubled if they're on the earth. So why would you ever land? You know? So, Okay, to use in period, cannot be wearing... Okay, so this restriction, they have, cannot be wearing medium or heavy armor if they do. Yeah, I mean, if you're flying, you probably won't be. Now, talent attack. Oh, I... 1d4 plus the strength modifier, okay, not bad. And languages, they can speak, read and write common, Arakrokra and Oran. Now, I don't remember what Oran was. If you guys remember, please leave in the comments down below. Maybe I do, this. Now, the name sounds familiar, but I just can't remember it. Now, let's take a look at the difference. Um, nothing much has changed if you look at the... Uh, the background and everything. Um, the legacy version has more information. Um, yeah, so if uh, there's some more lore-ish stuff on here, if you want to go ahead, um, let's take a look at what happens. Uh, determining your ability scores, increase score by two, increase the difference score by one. Okay. So they don't actually say what ability scores are going to increase, but you can pick whichever one you want. Um, I'm usually not in favor of this. I usually like the legacy version better. 
um, because some people are going to be better at some things. I mean, they have, uh, like for them, it is dexterity. They have wings. They can probably move dexterity. Wisdom, I think it goes with the bird theme. People seem to seem to associate birds with wisdom. Uh, so, yeah, that too. And they plus they mature at a, at a younger age than most humans. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, you can follow the decisions to you know them, but you cannot raise. Okay, so basically same rules, but uh, yeah, you can choose which scores to increase by two and which one by one. Uh, for language, uh, I think um, it's going to be on the DM for this one. Um, I tend to go with both either way. It just depends. If you're an Arakokra, maybe if you, if it's for your background, maybe you are separated from your parents or something, then you might not know it. But other than that, usually I just give them whatever race... Uh, Whatever equivalates with their race, if, if you know what I mean. Uh, creature type, which is going to be a medium humanoid type. Well, I think we've already been through it. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is, I think, more information. Uh, let's see. Lifespan. Uh, let's see. Doesn't give... Doesn't give an actual number, but... Um, hmm. uh, sometimes... In my games, if you, if you reach level 5, basically your lifespan increases as the stronger you get, your lifespan basically, by the time you're like uh, between level, uh, what is it, 11 to 14, you basically can live like a, over 100 years. Yeah, okay. So I don't usually go with this much, that much, uh, this one that much. Some of my campaigns run over years and I would do short breaks in between where our people could just increase the level by maybe two or three. Uh, yeah, that's just how I play it. Let's see, height. Okay, so it's however you want to be. I usually like these. I would actually have a number and then go with the number. Yeah, it's, it gives you something to look at, kind of like... Um, I know there's diff humans come in different shapes and sizes, and uh, apparently all the other races would come in different shapes and sizes. But like, if you want to be the average, you don't want to stand out more. I, th I really think like I, I think the best gameplay would be combining both the legacy versions and the new versions together. Now let's take a look at the traits: creature type, humanoid, uh, size medium. Okay, uh, that didn't change. Let's see speed. Walking speed is thirty feet. Uh, because of wings, if flying equal to their walking speed. So, okay, so I don't know. Hmm. Maybe this won't make them broken anymore, but... Uh, so in the Legacy Edition, they were twice as fast if they flew. But now it looks like uh, their walking speed and their flying speed is going to be the same as 30 feet. I don't know. Maybe in my homebrew campaigns, I'll give them 35. It's just too close to 25 for walking speed, in my opinion, but... Hmm. Yeah, up to you. Let's see. Talent attack, same thing. Oh, 1d6 instead of 1d4, I believe. Yeah, it used to be 1d4. 1d6 plus strength modifier. Okay. Wind caller. I don't think this was in the... Oh, yeah, it wasn't in here. So they're basically going to gain an ability. Uh, starting at third level, you can cast Gust of Wind spell. Okay, let's see what it is. So Okay, so this is basically them flapping their wings. Not bad. So you can either use intelligence, wisdom, or charisma as your spellcasting ability. Okay, so... Hmm. We'll see. Okay, so with that, we're done with Aracrocra. Um, and if you guys have any opinions on both of them, um, leave, uh, leave them in the comments. Let's see, let's move on. So, let's move on to the Asamar. I believe that's how you say it. Let's hear it. Asamar. Okay, there we go. So, uh, the Asamar are the antith antithesis, I believe, is that the word? Uh, the Basically, the opposite of tieflings. And uh, tieflings are the half-human and half-demon slash devil offspring. Asamar are basically half-human and half-celestial, I would say. Angels or any other species. A celestial creature that mates with a human and in the legacy version there's a lot of ways you can uh, there's a lot of info given they have even stuff from mount celestia 
and everything um, for name guide and stuff it's all over here conflicted souls so um, in the beginning uh, uh, SMR had a lot of uh, subclasses so the first one it started off was with the variant SMR which is just the SMR and uh, basically it gave you a wisdom increase and a charisma increase the wisdom by one charisma by two uh, the nature same as humans that live okay so the age doesn't change just the human age which is like uh, you can manipulate however you want size or basically medium all the creatures will be medium walking speed 30 feet same as humans they had dark vision celestial resistance and celestial legacy which is in its own i believe pretty strong and what would happen is uh, maybe f until level five i would let my players play asmr and then i would uh, Make maybe let them choose a subclass except for Fallen SMR. Uh, use the Scourge or the Protector Scourge. Yeah, you could go with those two, and then if for some reason during the story they they fall, they lose in touch with um, their celestial parents or the celestial nature, and they turn towards evil. So I would turn them into the Fallen. So what I would do is like I would increase. I would take away the, uh, for the scourge, like it says, the constitution increases uh, by one. So I would take that away and put in, um, oops, and change it with the strength score increase. It's, it's a good way to, to tell the story. The And uh, let's see, let's take a look at the protector first. Um, wisdom increases by one. It gets radiant soul at level three. Uh, hmm. Scourge, SMR, okay. radiant consumption. Here, okay, so yeah, so basically, um, it's up to you. Usually, if uh, if you go by my way, they'll be probably have like three, uh, sorry, four uh, score increases, or you can switch one out. Usually, what I do is I decrease the charisma by one, and add whatever they want to add here. Uh, this is one of the reasons why Asmari is one of the most uh, played races I've seen in the beginning, and then people move on from it but it is a pretty good uh, pretty good race um let's see the, the let's look at the average smr traits um we have the charisma score increases by two um the age is same as humans and can live oh but they can live up to 160 years okay not bad um height and weight same as humans walking speed 30 feet not bad dark vision celestial resistance uh healing hands light bearer and uh, basically languages hmm. Nothing much different from most tieflings, I think just inverted, if you will. But a lot of people that start out, uh, some a lot of people try ASMR. It's a pretty good um, race to to role play. A lot of people just go in, uh, from my experience, a lot of people just go in thinking they'll play the good guy, but then they have to actually think about their choices. So, like I said, it's not good being, it's not easy being good, as the saying goes. And now let's take a look at the new one. Okay, let's see, the new race, uh, the new details of SMR, uh, let's see, same thing, uh, the f features, so in the in the previous one, they gave you hints about the name, name choosing, or and traits you would have, and in this one, you get uh, celestial features, so what you could do is combine both, let's see, hmm. as seen with the new races, um, the new rules. Basically, they don't actually incre tell you which score increases, but they still give you um, this uh, increase one score by two and uh, increase another one by one, which total of three scores by one. Okay, let's see. Languages, same as the other one. It's all up to the DM and the player. Creature type is going to be humanoid and... Uh, yeah, humanoid, medium humanoid. Uh, same thing as so before. Lifespan. Um, okay. Um, yeah, like I said, in my campaigns, it doesn't matter a lot. But uh, if it does to you, like it said before in this one, the lifespans are similar to that of humans. Can live up to 160 years, which is quite a lot. Um, let's see. Height and weight, which is going to be determined by you. And um, height and weight table. You can, you can use that if you want to. Now let's take a look at the traits. Um, you are a humanoid, size medium or small. Okay, we can be a small SMR, not bad. There are some small creatures, um, small races, let's see. Speed, your walking speed is 30 feet. 
not didn't change celestial resistance not bad dark vision healing hands light bearer celestial revelation which gives us necrotic shroud radiant consumption and radiant soul so what it appears to me is they combined all the subclasses into one no and probably gave them some boosts in uh, in what their damages do as we've seen before but uh, huh I mean, you can go down this route if you want, if you just want the SMR to be the SMR and they never have a falling out with their deity. And you can basically give them this. This um, makes them more stronger, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's up to you, the player and the DM. If it's something that uh, works for you, go ahead. And with that, we're done with SMR. Let's take a look at the Genasi. So in the past, the Genasi was one race, which and which had um, four sub races, and each of the four sub races correlated with an element. Uh, the Genasi are basically half human, half genie hybrids, and they gain their power from the uh, elemental planes, basically. So an air Genasi would appear more grayish, I believe. Uh, we can go through it. Um, as you can see in the legacy version, there's a lot of information about Genasi and some of their backgrounds, their names, and some of the... Let's take a look at the average uh, traits they would have. Let's see. Okay. Languages, they can speak, read, write, common, and primordial. Okay. And it even gives you what uh, primordial will sound like. Not bad. Ability score, constitution increases by two. Um, okay. Let's see, age. Genasi mature at the same age about humans and live somewhat longer than humans. Okay, 120 years, not bad. Alignment, independent self alignment towards neutral alignments. Um, you can play around with this one. I have had maybe two players play Genasi. One was a fire Genasi, one was a air Genasi. And they both went with neutral good. And one was like, tried to be neutral all the way, but then didn't work out and just said it was neutral good. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, you can play around with this because uh, as we know, there are some of the genies, uh, I think the Ifrit and some uh, some of the others, some of them tend towards chaotic uh, evil, some, of you, some, are, some are lawful evil. So you can play around with that. Hmm. Say size, uh, medium all the way. You hardly will find any creature a playable race that is large and above it usually stops at medium let's take a look speed walking speed is 30 feet which is very similar and now let's take a look at the air genasi okay so it basically gives you the information about the genasi uh, the edge uh, let's see uh, the jinn as we know them are the genie and the jinn is more of an arabic word i think i'm not too sure on that correct me if i'm wrong um, but in D&D, they are the air genies. They are connected with the elemental plane of air, and that's why they usually stay. And, uh, yeah, they will usually have smoke or mist uh, on their bottom half, um, basically. And, yeah, imagine the genie from uh, Aladdin, and he would more... He more or less, I think, would be classified as an air genasi, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, let's see. Dexterity increases by one. Um... Unending breath. Okay, you are, cannot be uh, incapacitated. Okay, mingle with the wind. Okay, you can cast the levitate spell. Not bad. And that is it for the air genasi. Not that much of a difference. It's just a sub race. And then, but in the newer uh, edition, this new book, uh, Monsters of the Multiverse, the air genasi are a race of their own. And as you can see, this is a example of an air genasi. And if you have not seen an air genasi before, this is where I get the reference of uh, it being very similarly. It looks very similar to the genie in Aladdin, the animated movie. Let's see the elemental plane of air. Like as I said, they are they come from there. Um, some information about the jinn. As we've seen, a lot of these new races, that uh, a lot of these, the updates to the races, basically, all of their scores increase by one. Uh, sorry, three scores increase by one. Um, one of the one ability score increases by two, while the other one increases by one. 
which is uh, and but they don't give you what will increase let's see languages uh, read write common and basically anything appropriate to the character not bad creature type hmm. let's see lifespan uh, doesn't give a number but as you've seen uh, this one does in the legacy edition you can use that let's see um yeah sometimes uh, lifespan can be a thing i've ran one campaign where all everyone was basically basically to level up it took a while to level up and so most of the characters spend most of the time basically i guess twice their time um leveling up their characters as they normally would and lifespan was a big issue in that one not an issue it was the thing i used as a first a story device basically okay let's see height and weight um, doesn't basically say anything similar to the all the other new versions and let's take a look at air genasi traits humanoid medium or small um speed 35 feet so that got an increase from the normal 30 feet i believe yeah um for the air genasi uh, i think that's fine air you know faster makes sense dark vision did they have dark vision before no, they did not. It looks like everything's gonna get dark vision. I would take this out. In my opinion, I would take this out and maybe give them glasses or something that gives them dark vision because uh, I don't know. From the pictures I've seen of the elemental plane of air, it does not seem like they need. Um, yeah, it does not seem like they need uh, dark vision over there. So I don't get why they would have it. Um, unending breath, similar lightning resistance. Okay, um, that didn't happen before. Um, mingle with the wind at third level. So every creature type, every new race, um, every updated race is getting a something at at level three. Hmm. Okay, so shocking grasp, feather fall, levitate, feather fall, and levitate. Okay. So they basically learn three spells basically they know it um i mean i don't see a problem with that um i would keep featherfall levitate shocking grasp if i decide to give them lightning resistance um i probably won't uh, because oh maybe i will i don't know i'll have to do my research on the element of plane of air and see if there's a lot of storms going on around there if they do then i probably will but I'll put a uh, spin on Shocking Grasp. They have to be hit by lightning to absorb it. Like, their body won't be able to produce lightning. Unless they're like a mage or something and then they get Shocking Grasp. Then that's a different story. Hmm. And there we have it with the air ones. Let's take a look at the Earth Genasi. Okay, as an Earth Genasi descendant from the cruel and greedy Dao. Yeah, so the Dao are the name of the Earth Genasi. Uh, though they are necessary evil yeah it's a uh, alignment works differently with different people the way i see it is like a human perspective on what other creatures do but what uh, i don't know alignment is something half the time i use it half the time i don't because it generally doesn't make sense on some of the characters uh yeah let's see ability score increases by one earthwalk not bad merge with stone not bad okay basically Pretty normal, pretty standard-ish stuff. Um, there we go. Hmm. Now let's take a look at the the new uh, updated version of uh, Earth Genasi, which, like the Air Genasi, is its own race in this uh, in this new book. Let's see. Uh, lifespan is about 120 years. Not bad. Okay. Shorter than most. I think it said it was 160 in uh, the Janasi one, let me see. Oh no, 120, so they live, oh, yeah, it's about the same. Ability score, same as before, it's the, uh, with all the new updated races, they gain three different scores, which can be increased by one. Uh, you can either choose between increasing one by two, the other one by one, or increasing three different scores by one. Languages, up to the DM and player, creature type. Uh, Primordial, I guess they would be, right? I think I didn't mention it before, but... Uh, it doesn't show up in... Oh, maybe Elemental. 
lifespan we went through this uh, already as mentioned on top 120 years height and weight up to the player uh, feature humanoid size medium or small walking speed th 30 feet okay so it's not 35 with the uh, as the air ones yeah i would go with 30 feet seems average not bad dark vision again okay for this one i might give them dark vision hmm because, you know, uh, from what I've read, the, the small amount of information I know about the element of plane of air is basically just Earth, and people have to walk through Earth. Earth walk is, that's why it's all Earth, uh, Janasi, no Earth walk. Okay, dark vision, I would give them that. Merge with stone. Mm hmm. Played ward. Hmm. Okay, yeah, this is fine. This isn't uh, anything way off. I think this is a good improvement on the Earth Genasi. Okay, yeah. Yeah, mm, yeah, not bad. Let's take a look at the Fire Genasi. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at the Legacy version. Um, the Fire Genasi come from the Ifrit, which is, I think, an Arabic word, I believe. Well, it could not be, but I do know it comes from around that area. Um, a lot of... Uh, a, a lot of Fire spirits, I guess. Fire summoning spirits in anime or manga would basically be called Ifrits. If you've been watching any of them recently. Let's see. Ability score. Intelligence increases by one. Not bad. Fire, intelligence. Eh, can go hand in hand. Dark vision. In the old version? But, okay. For a fire, Genasi? I don't know. Uh... Um, I think this would be up to the player and the DM. I usually don't give dark vision a lot because it it makes it more challenging. And everything has dark vision, then what's the point? If someone chooses a creature that doesn't have dark vision, and basically everyone else has dark vision, I just give them dark vision. But I usually don't like giving out dark vision to a lot of races because it just I don't know. It, it ruins the surprise factor of the monsters. Or any homebrew monster I make myself. Fire resistance. Totally understandable. Reach of the blaze. You can produce flame. And burning hands. Okay. Produce flames and burning hands. Not bad. Now let's take a look at uh, what they did with the new version. The fire genasi. As you can see, that's what the fire genasi look like. Okay. Descended from the freed from the elemental plane of fire. We've already went through this. Lifespan 120 is that's the average, I guess. And as all updated races, you can either increase one score by two and the other one by one, or choose three different uh, scores to increase. Language, you and the DM can make sure to go through it. Creature type, they'll probably be an elemental, I believe. Lifespan, as we've gone through it. Hmm. Height and weight. Um, yeah, go through it with the DM. Humanoid, either medium or small. Very similar. Walking speed, 30 feet. I don't know. I guess 30 feet is fine. Yeah, I guess 30 feet is fine. Uh, dark vision. Even in the new version, they have dark vision. Um, okay, fire resistance. Okay. Uh, reach for the blaze. So they will get produced flame, as before. Burning hands, as before. And on fifth level, they gain Flame Blade. Okay, so they basically have a new spell added in. Um, new spell that they can do, not bad. Still with the Dark Vision, I'm not sure. I think I would. Because they're from the Elemental Plane of Fire. So what are you gonna. I mean, isn't it bright all over? Or maybe it's just me, I don't know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Now let's take a look at. The water genasi. Okay. The water genasi. What are they? Uh, what is the name of their uh, gene and uh, the, the gen race? Uh, uh, we'll figure it out later. Uh, let's take a look at the legacy version. Wisdom increases by one. Water wisdom. Eh, totally understand. Uh, you have resistance to acid damage. Okay. Can breathe air and water. Swimming speed is 
30 feet same as walking speed I believe so not bad um, yeah not bad call of the waves sorry call of the waves they know the shape water can trip and at level 3 they get create or destroy water hmm, not bad okay so that's all we have of the water genasi now let's take a look at the updated version a image of a water genasi okay so they are descended from the oh myriads yeah myriads uh the elm from the elemental plane of water that's uh, okay there we go same age lifespan as 120 years and same with the ability scores the same mentioned before um language okay feature okay let's just go to the traits creature type humanoid size medium small okay in a band uh, walking speed 30 feet and can swim equally so nothing's changed over there acid okay amphibious okay so let's take a look at this call to the waves hmm. you know acid splash okay that's new uh, create or destroy water okay but uh, huh so shape they don't have shape water anymore okay water walk makes sense I guess but do they need to? Uh, I guess if they're going through, but they have acid resistance, right? Or yeah, they have resistance. They don't have immunity to acid. So, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Water walk, not bad. So acid splash has taken the place of shape water and they've gained water walk. Not bad. Um, shape water. Uh, I don't know if I'm if I. I guess this is the only reason I can think of acid splashes here is because of the acid resistance. But uh, I will leave it as a choice. I guess on the player, what do what do they want? Do they want shape water or do they want acid splash? So yeah, we'll see. They also have dark vision. Which makes sense because it's underwater, probably not a, not a lot of light, so they use dark vision. So for the water genasi and the earth genasi, I would probably keep the dark vision. Okay, and that's it for the genasi. And we're moving on to the bugbear. So this is what the legacy version of the bugbear looks like. Um, I always keep them as small creatures. Uh, maybe maybe here or there uh, some of them are medium so basically they're larger very different from their race um i had one player uh show interest in playing the bugbear race but it didn't suit the bugbear race if you know what i mean they're usually a more of a pack animal kind of thing than uh, solitary but uh, you can make a story where one didn't belong and left the left the tribe i guess and he has a lot of information about um, bugbears, what they worship and stuff. Okay, blessings of the bugbear gods. Uh, let's look at their traits. Okay, an ability score increases. Your strength increases by two and dexterity by one. Makes sense. Bugbears reach adulthood at age 16 and live up to 80 years. Long lifespan. Oh, short, sorry, short lifespan. Size bugbears are between six to eight feet tall, and between twenty two fifty to three fifty pounds. On pan, your size is medium. Okay, so in the legacy version, the bugbears are a medium size race. Uh, maybe I'm picturing something else, or maybe, or maybe I made them small in one campaign and then just thought they were small. As the lore, huh? My bad. Speed 30 feet for a medium and a pen. Dark vision. I'll probably keep it. Long limbed. Okay. So basically they have a 10 feet range. Usually an average character uh, character race has a reach of 5 feet for melee attacks. But they have 10 feet I guess. Not bad. The long limbs. Not bad. Not bad. Powerful build. Um... So they can be counted as one size larger. Probably due to their strength. You are proficient in the stealth skill. Okay. Uh, 
probably need to do more research to figure out why they have this, but we'll see. Surprise attack. Um, no, that one. Maybe this is the reason why they're sneaking to do the surprise attack. Yeah, okay. Maybe never mind. I changed my mind. I'll I'll keep sneaky. Languages uh, common and goblin. Yeah, because uh, I think. Um, and now let's take a look at the updated version. And this is what the updated version looks like. Now here is a tip, I guess. I would start out maybe if a player is playing bugbear with this picture as their avatar. And as they level up, they can change it to this one where it looks more mature, if, if you know what I mean. Okay, now let's take a look at the differences. Okay, let's take a look at their traits. Humanoid, you are a humanoid, also considered a goblinoid. Okay, not bad. So, I like this change. It wasn't in the Legacy Edition, I believe. Did it get mentioned? Probably was up top over here, but I uh, didn't read through it. Okay, size is medium. Walking speed is 30 feet. Didn't change dark vision. Okay, Fae Ancestry. So this is one thing they did not have in the Legacy Edition. Uh, I would probably not keep this. Because uh, the goblins, hobgoblins, and the bugbears, they don't seem Fae-like to me. Oh, it, 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 this is just my opinion, and if, if it is to you, you might probably want to keep it. Long-limbed, same as before. Powerful build, same as before. Sneaky, same as before. And surprise attack. I think the surprise attack got a boost in there. 2d6. Nope, it's still the same. 2d6. So the big difference is Fey Ancestry, I believe. And this Goblinoid type. Um, yeah, not that, not that big of a difference, so... Yeah, I think it also says with roots in the Feywild. Early bugbears are in hidden places, okay. So maybe they originally were Fey and then they became uh, came under the control of the the bug uh, the gods, I believe, because there's some story where the one of the was it hobgoblin gods or the bugbear or was it the goblin? One of them, one of their gods basically subjugated the other two races, uh, their gods basically killed their pantheon, and any god that had uh, the alignment towards evil basically joined up with the with the god, basically. So that's what happened. Um, so I mean, you can keep the Feywild stuff. That's up to you because the only thing it gives it gives him. A, um, let's see, it gives them. Yeah, an advantage on saving throws to avoid or end the charm condition. Yeah, it, it isn't that big of a, a boost, I believe. If you want, you can go ahead and try it. And with that, we're going to end our video. And in the next, um, there has been a lot of stuff released uh, in the new, whoops, let's see, in this book and I am very very happy with it uh, a lot of stuff especially the bestiary which has given us a lot of uh, a lot of creatures like the black abishai the blue abishai so if you have not um, purchased any of the previous source books from Dungeons and Dragons and you are very new to Dungeons and Dragons I would suggest maybe purchasing this one so yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Please like, subscribe, um, comment down below if I messed up anything. Uh, let me know if I said anything wrong and uh, correct me in the comments. Um, have at it. If there's any tips and tricks you have for people who are new to D&D or maybe planning on using uh, these races. Um, yeah, so leave them in the comments down below. And with that, you'll be helping out other players. You'll be helping out me, especially my players. And uh, yeah, I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. It's the end of the video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.